And I am Pastor Cindy, and we welcome everyone today. And so we are going to give God some praise. And if you are ready to give God praise this morning with me, get your mouth, get your hands, get your spirits ready, because we're going to do that. We are actually going to take the time today and lift up the name of Jesus. And I know that I'm not the only one. And I know I have two or three or even more of you that believe in the power of praise. You know, it was speaking to me this week and he mentioned, you know, we are all under construction. Somebody said we're all under construction and we're going to go into prayer with this. But I just want to set a foundation. We're all under construction and so have any of you passed by a construction site? Have you driven by a construction site? Have you seen it on social media or on TV, wherever? I'm sure we all have a visual of what a construction site looks like. And what does it look like? There's usually um, a lot of movement, a lot of equipment, and it's usually enclosed. And there's a sign usually in the front uh, construction site, the company that is building. And it's not accessible to the public because it's a lot happening in that construction construction site. And God told me that some of us here, including myself, are under construction in the spirit. And what does that mean when we're under construction in the spirit? It means that we somehow have a sign that we're portraying to the world that, hey, I'm not accessible right here. Um, there might be a lot happening in my background. There might be a lot that mess and, and debris that you may see. And it, 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 I may seem enclosed in a sense, but that doesn't mean that you are forsaken. That doesn't mean that you are unapproachable all it means that you're under construction and it doesn't mean that you might be accessible to everyone and everyone may not understand what's happening behind the fence and everyone may not be able to get what the machinery that God is using to unearth some things in you but nevertheless do not despise God told me your construction season don't be discouraged while you're under construction because anything that is under construction by the power of God will come forth as a pure gold. God said, do not despise our construction season. I don't know if this is for somebody this morning, but this is definitely for me. You are being restored in your construction season. You are being built up in your construction season. You are being brought up to code. When God told me that, I'm like, wow, God brought up to code. What do you mean I'm being brought up to code? He said, because some levels in the spiritual realm in you has been left out and has not been brought up to code because there are some things in you that still needs to be say okay aligned with the word there's some things that still need to be aligned with his promises and some of us have levels on our temples that still need to be brought up to code some of us have temperance flaws in our temple that need to be worked on some of us have some faith flaws that need to be brought up to code some of us have some forgiveness flaws that need to be brought up to code whatever it is God is reminding us today people of God your construction season has purpose your construction season my construction season may not be explainable it may not look pretty it may not present as if anything is happening because everybody doesn't have access to see beyond your fence beyond the wall but God is reminding us consider it worthy to be under construction by the spirit of God consider it to be a privilege that God said that I can still see something in you that needs to be brought up that something in me that needs his spirit we are not left aside abandoned by God this morning he is sending his workman the Holy Spirit to do a great work in us and this morning the word that came to me in the scripture of Ephesians 2.10, it says, for we are his workmanship. Anybody that's under construction, you are under the workmanship of God. He created us in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before the hand that we should walk in them. So people of God this morning, you, myself, under construction, it is a blessing. First, you are under construction in season. You're under construction 
instruction because there is still a call on our lives. There is still purpose in us. There is still something worthy to be restored. There is still something. Let me tell you, anybody that had a promise from God, God is not going to give up on his promise in us. He's not going to say, I'm going to abandon because it doesn't look right. It doesn't sound like it is not comfortable right now. I am, pre I am preparing something for you, thus says the Lord, and the preparation season is not one to despise. It's not one to pretend it's not happening. The preparation, the construction season is as valuable as the day that we open up and we say, here, look at me, look what God has done. Do not neglect the seasons that we're in. God is doing it for his glory. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Is anyone, the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is anyone glad this morning to be in the presence of the living God? Is anyone glad this morning to be able to say, I know who God is and I am able to lift up my voice and worship him and praise him and adore him? Hallelujah. I am glad this morning to be here with you all coming together in one accord, in unity, lifting up the name of Jesus. And we are not going to dwell because the presence of the Lord, I don't know if you feel his presence, but I know that I feel his presence right where I am. And I know that God wants to do a great and mighty move because his presence is so rich. And so this time we're just going to go right in, come on and begin to lift him up, begin to open up your mouths, and give him the fruits of your lips. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are Yahweh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, oh God. Glory to your name, Jesus. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. You are worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we lift you up this morning. We magnify and adore you. There is none like you, oh God. There is none like you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy. We magnify you, oh God, this morning. We lift you up, oh God, this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, you are worthy. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. You are worthy, you are worthy, oh God, you are worthy. There is none like you, there's none beside you. You are worthy, you are worthy, Jesus, you are worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is none like you. There's none beside you. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. There is none like you. There's none beside you. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. There is none like you. There's none beside you. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. There is none like you. There's none beside you. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. There is none like you. There's none beside you. Oh, hallelujah. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, Jesus. There is none like you. There's none beside you. At this time, I turn it over to Pastor Roger. 
Hallelujah. God is so worthy to be praised. Lord, we bless you. We glorify you. We magnify your name, oh God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank God. We worship you. We magnify you. Oh, we glorify you, Lord God. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is in this atmosphere. The Lord is in this atmosphere. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. And when he's here, nothing else matters. I'm sorry. <laughs> when the Lord shows up, nothing else matters. Satadaba shikindi bikatabu sutu. Lord, you're worthy to be praised, oh God. Nothing else matters. When the Lord shows up. Satadaba Somebody say hallelujah. Don't allow anything in your soul to distract you. See, because if that can distract you in the midst of the presence, in the midst of the fire, in the midst of the glory of God, then that is a major problem. Because how many of you feel the presence of the Lord? The presence of the Lord is here. And when God shows up, Oh, my double, don't you dare act like it doesn't matter. Because <laughs> when the Lord shows up, it matters. Everything changes. If this, what I'm about to talk about, had to have a topic, my God, it would be, it wasn't the devil this time. It wasn't the devil this time. Because a lot of times we like to blame everything on the devil. It's the devil, it's the devil. But if we're serving the Lord, how can it be the devil? The devil is not our master. Not unless we open up a door to the enemy, but everything is not the enemy. Glory be to God. I want to touch on a couple of scriptures, not many, but there's one particular scripture where the Bible says in John 9, verse 1, John 9, verse 1. Hallelujah. Well, the Bible says, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. He was blind from birth. This is not something that uh, happened during his lifetime he, since he was born. He was born that way. And his disciples asked him, they asked a question saying, Master, who sinned? Who did sin? Was it this man who sinned or his parents that he was born blind? The Bible says, Jesus answered, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. In other words, he was born this way so that this day would come where I would meet him and heal him. He's not blind because because the devil did it, blinded his eyes, no one threw acid in his eyes. No, none of that. He was born that way in order, catch this, to bring glory to God. Let's go to another story that proves that it's not always the enemy. The book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1, we've read it a million times with the life of Hannah, where she was without child, the Bible says. She had no children. <laughs> she had nothing to push out. Lord have mercy. She had nothing to birth. And the Bible says, 
Penina, who had children, irritated her and mocked her and frustrated her because she could not have children. Is there anybody frustrating you? Is there anything in your life that's irritating you? Sometimes the Lord will bring about the irritation to push us to pray, to push us to fast. And understand, the irritation of something that has not happened yet is going to push us to a place of travail. We cannot give up. We cannot throw in the towel. We must pursue and go forward in prayer and trust the Lord, knowing that I'm in this situation. It's uncomfortable, but it's going to bring glory to God somehow.